Hello tanks and tankettes, welcome to a viewer replay. This is from Solid Cobra and he's driving the Churchill Mark 7. Now this is an 0.93 replay or 0.9, uh, 9.3 point whatever. Anyway, I'm getting confused numbers, how do they work? But um, yeah, I have known fathers in this one, so some people may have noticed that my more recent ones, kind of 9.5 onwards, don't have known fathers, and I just found it was causing a few too many issues when trying to record in terms of frame rate. Some videos worse than others, but um, as much as I like known fathers, I've given up on it for now. So anyway, this is incredible matchmaking for a Churchill 7. The enemy team don't even have a top tier heavy tank, but got a VK3001P and an SU100Y. Both of which have guns that could potentially hurt this thing, but in theory, I mean, this is like as good as it gets matchmaking wise for a Churchill 7. Like, it, the only way it could be better if it was the only tier 6 and like the rest of the team were all tier 4s or something, I don't know. It could happen. I have been in situations where basically that kind of thing has happened. Specifically in a tier 7 battle where I was the only tier 7 and everyone else was a tier 5. Occasionally Matchmaker does poop its pants that badly. So the Churchill 7, um, I think personally it's the weakest of the Churchills and that's mostly because it really doesn't get much of a gun upgrade compared to the Churchill Mark 1. In fact it's barely an upgrade at all. It's a couple of mil extra um, average pen and the armor is better it also has the distinction of being the only tank in the game so far where the armor links on the turret actually count as spaced armor but it's only the armor links on the side of the turret not the eyebrows and the eyebrows are the most distinctive feature of this tank it's why I call it the Dennis Healy tank because of those eyebrows and if you're British you'll know who he is and if you're not I'll probably have put a picture up on screen, or maybe Caption Guy will, I don't know. He's weirdly efficient about these things, I mean, I can't, I can't say I like him, but he is still somehow weirdly efficient at being snarky, I suppose. Um, anyway, but this team is rapidly collapsing, um, the enemy team has got three quarters of the map controlled, the remaining friendly tanks are huddled into this corner, and this is pretty much just as solid has gotten up to this particular um, flank of this hill and if there's uh, such a thing as a heavy corner on mines uh, this is pretty much it but he realizes that uh, well he must realize that looking you know looking at the minimap things are not good right now it's a pretty dire situation his teammates are dying left right and center he's rapidly running out of support and although this is extremely good matchmaking for a Churchill 7 you can still just as easily get mobbed in this tank as you can in any other tank. And the, the armor is only really any good frontally. And one of the disadvantages of the Churchill, apart from the, the low speed and the barely an upgrade gun, is the fact that like the other Churchills, like some of the French tanks as well, because the tracks are integrated into the hull, it is way more likely than with most other tanks to get damaged whilst being shot through the tracks. That can happen with other tanks if you're being shot through an axle. But with a Churchill, someone can be facing you frontal, uh, frontally, you know, head on. And you shoot into their tracks and you can damage them because it's going through the tracks and into the hull. And there's a problem with the ARL-44 and the BDR as well, so it's not unique to the Churchills, but it's one of the more annoying features of the Churchills. We're about to see one of the other more annoying features of the Churchills as well, which is the gun depression. He's got shots on this chaffy all day long. He just can't get his gun down low enough. So that's annoying. So it's down to three tanks now. Solid's already racked up 1100 damage and two kills. One of the KV-1s has got a pair of kills. The T-14's just died. And that KV-1 is another kill, which is good. But he's not in the best of health. Now, Solid is a much to keep most of his health and the M4 that was last spotted up behind him was actually still behind him but only now has he chosen to pop out and shoot Solid in the butt. So that really works in Solid's favour. I keep wanting to say Solid Snake. I mean Solid Cobra. It, I'm guessing it's a reference to uh, that series of games the name of which temporarily escapes me. Oh that's bad. 
I know, uh, Metal Gear Solid, there we go. I never played any of those, so it's like, it's in my consciousness as a thing that exists, but anyway. So there we go, that's an example of the Kiddie One shoots him in the track and damages him at the same time. Now this is a bit... Lucky. I mean, I don't know why he shoots the Matilda over the KV-1. The KV-1's definitely the more important target. But that one shot into the Matilda set him on fire, killed him. So, definitely lucky. But again, KV-1 hits him, pens the through the front of the track, into the hull. Shots like that are super annoying when you're playing the Churchills. The Churchill 1 is definitely stronger for its tier, just because uh, the gun is much better for its tier. In terms of alpha damage, it's not particularly classed by anything apart from the BDR G1B, which is unique in having, of course, a 90mm gun. But by the time you get to tier 6, there are much beefier guns around. But this doesn't really have an upgrade. It feels pretty weedy. It definitely relies on its DPM. I honestly think this should have the 17 pounder and then... I don't know what you'd do for the Black Prince though, that's the thing. But the Black Prince also feels undergunned for its tier, not because of the pen, but because of the weedy alpha. So, an unlucky hit by that T-34, and despite the dream matchmaking, there's still been a lot of stuff that's been able to hurt him, and all of it's been tier 5. It's not like even in these circumstances that you can really rely on the Churchill 7's armour. The gun at least being top tier in this scenario, this is about as best uh, uh, as you can hope for in terms of um, being able to put your firepower to good use because the relatively low penetration for a tier 6 heavy, in fact I think it's the lowest penetration for a tier 6 heavy, it doesn't matter especially. You don't have to rely on your gold rounds and you can see there he has got a lot of APCR. He's also got a weirdly high amount of uh, the HE, I don't know why. The HE on this thing's pretty bad, um, but he he's just relying on his armor now. He has to, because he doesn't have, really have that many hit points left. The T-34 is probably the bigger threat, but the Gorilla has actually... Oh, that's unlucky. The Gorilla actually has come forward to um, engage him as well, because we're down to... You know, he's held on magnificently. He's done over 3k damage now, and he must have such... Oh, he must have had, past tense, such... Uh, sweaty palms at this point, like the adrenaline must really have been going because there's a decent chance he can get this if he just doesn't screw it up. He went just that bit too far forward to get the shot on the gorilla and of course there was a chance the gorilla might have missed but unfortunately the gorilla didn't miss but it's still fortunate in a way because the gorilla could easily have killed him at the health that he was on but it looked like either it was a splash or his tracks actually ate the shot, so he's lucky to be alive. He's unlucky to have been hit, but he is lucky to be alive. So he's now not getting a, a silhouette on this T-34, but even when the uh, silhouette bug was a thing, because it was a bug for a while, but sometimes you wouldn't get a silhouette on an enemy tank when you were um, putting your uh, reticle over them, but the armor penetration indicator still gives you some idea of when you are actually uh, aiming over their tank. So he was relying on that and he did get one good hit in. But the guy is still, he's alive. He's on low health, but he's alive. Oh, 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 pull back, pull back. Get the front of the tank towards him. You don't want to give this guy the side of your tank because the T-34's got a pretty decent gun. And can he make it work? And there, he, there we go, he does. That's really, that, that was important. Taking that guy out of the equation means that he's now only got an enemy from one direction to deal with. I can't even begin to imagine, like, the, the adrenaline must have been going so much right now. <laughs> and I guess to this point, I mean, somebody already predicted that on the enemy team was like, oh my god, you, go, you, you, you might actually win this. And from this point forward, you actually see the enemy team in the chat, if you're paying attention to that. Uh, they, they're actually starting to praise him. I mean, some of them are actually starting to root for him just because this is such a good performance. And it's now down to this war of nerves, him and this gorilla. So he's backing off here. You'll notice on the minimap with a little grey circle, that's the auto-spotting range. He's actually disengaging. He's breaking contact from this guy. So they're not auto-spotting each other. He knows the gorilla probably isn't likely to move. That guy is just going to want to sit there and be pre-aimed, because that's the gorilla's best chance of actually doing something. 
But now the grill is going to be uncertain because there's still five minutes left to go. Maybe he's faking out. Maybe he's driving back to his cap. Maybe he's going to go round the hill, come up from behind. Although that last one, a little unlikely given the low speed of the Churchill. That's one of the reasons why it's unpopular. But honestly, I think if it had a better gun, uh, more people would like it. But anyway, he spots the grill. The grill has obviously spotted him. The guy just goes for it. And there we go. That's it. You can see that exultant yes in the chat there. Uh, I would be happy to have won that. That was damn close. That was that was some result. I mean, even with that matchmaking, even with that matchmaking, it was still an incredibly close thing. Like that could have been, but for a bit of unlucky RNG a really close loss and that would have been gutting if it had been a loss because he worked so hard for that and yeah he was in a good tank for it but there are actually even in terms of armor there are better tanks at tier 6 like the T150 um, even the KV-85 you possibly could have done some of that with the right gun um, the ARL 44 depending on your opponents of course because the ARL's got a much weaker turret than the Churchill 7 but just, I don't know, he just had enough luck, he just had enough everything, he just kept his head at the right moments, and although he did make one or two mistakes, which are understandable when you're under, under that kind of pressure, uh, he was able to follow through and walk away with a Radley Walters and a Kolobarnovs medal, which is quite impressive, and do over 3k damage into the bargain, which with that gun, again, is quite impressive. He almost ran out of AP shells in that. I mean, he still had plenty of APCR shells, but um, even so, that shows you how often you need to fire that gun in order to do that much damage. That was 54 shots fired with 35 hits and 34 pens. So you need to fire quite a lot of shells to be able to stack up that amount of damage in a Churchill. And it's not so much a thing at tier 5, where everyone else has got similar amounts of alpha, but at uh, tier 6... You've got to be sitting out in the open for quite a long time to get those shots off. And that's always been one of the problems with British low alpha guns generally. It feels like for the amount of alpha damage that you get, you know, the pen's good and the rate of fire's good, but on some of the tanks, the armor isn't quite adequate. And I'd say the Churchill 7 is one of them um, to actually just sit there and put the rate of fire to use because they're all about the rate of fire. So... Yeah, I think that was uh, exceptional, and I mean that in every way. I don't think you're going to see performances like this in a Churchill 7 very often. It was an exception, but it was also um, exceptional in the sense of it was a really good game, and it was really well played, for the most part, by Solid Cobra. So you should feel pleased by that result. That was uh, really putting that machine to the, the absolute test, even given the absolutely godlike matchmaking that you had, in theory. So there we go. You don't see many Churchill 7 replays around, and that's because you probably don't see um, many people playing it, and you probably don't have many people of the ones that are playing it having really good games, and this is a rare thing, a game quite this good in a Churchill 7. So, yeah, I, I looked through a few in my inbox to um, decide on, and I ended up going with this one just because it was such a great result um other people that have sent them to me might go and this is always a risk of doing a youtube channel where you do viewer replays there's always the chance that someone else will go oh my god why didn't you show mine well hopefully you having watched this replay will agree that it's a good one obviously everybody tends to think their own games are the best because of you know there's a certain amount of bias involved um but um yeah, let's not let's not rain on Solid Cobra's parade. This was a good game. I hope we can all agree on that. So, if you did enjoy this, you can hit the like button, you can leave any comments below, you can subscribe to my channel, and as always, stay tuned for more. Three, one,